Megan Legal here, also known as Matthew. Megan. My name is actually, sorry, got that mixed up. Uh, Matthew Phillips, also known as Dragon Legal, when I live stream for video games when I play mostly Pokemon right now, but I've been bearing it up. Anyways, so I have not watched the full presidential debates. I've only seen bits and clips of it, so I figure I'll actually watch it this time. Um, I figure since I have struggled more now than ever, especially now with me no longer living it. This is the first, I just realized, this is the first election where I wasn't living at my mom's. So, yeah, this is more important for me now than ever. And here's the thing, I do also have an investment in this, because now my job is tied directly to this. I... Let's just say my job involves things that are tied directly to this, although I'm not seeing them really discuss student loans, so who knows. Either way, let's get this started. I'm setting up a timer because I'm recording this and I'm re-uploading this to YouTube in multiple parts so it's not like a two hour long video at once so um, when the timer goes off after 35 minutes that's when I'm gonna pause for the next part of YouTube so alright let's get this going welcome our viewers in the United States and around the world to our studios in Atlanta this is gonna be terrifying isn't it this debate is being produced by CNN and is coming to you live on CNN, CNN International, CNN.com, CNN Max, and CNN Espanol. This is a pivotal moment between President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump in their rematch for the nation's highest office. Each will make his case to the American people with just over four months until Election Day. Good evening, I'm Dana Bash, anchor of CNN's Inside Politics and co-anchor of State of the Union. I'm Jake Tapper, anchor of CNN's The Lead and co-anchor of State of the Union. Dana and I will co-moderate this evening. Our job is to facilitate a debate between the two candidates tonight. Before we introduce them, we want to share the rules of the debate with the audience at home. Former President Trump will be on the left side of the screen. President Biden will be appearing on the right. A coin toss determined their positions. Each candidate will have two minutes to answer a question. What difference does it make? For responses and rebuttals. An additional minute for follow-up, clarification, or response is at the moderator's discretion. When it's time for a candidate to speak, his microphone will be turned on, and his opponent's microphone will be turned off. Should a candidate interrupt when his microphone is muted, he will be difficult to understand for viewers at home. At the end of the debate, each candidate will get two minutes for closing statements. There is no studio audience tonight. Pre-written notes, props, or contacts with campaign staff are not permitted during the debate. By accepting our invitation to debate, both candidates and their campaigns agreed to accept these rules. Now, please welcome the 46th President of the United States, Joe Biden. There's somebody there, Joe! Who the hell are you waving to? And please welcome the 45th president of the United States, Donald Trump. The first thing Joe does is wave to an invisible audience. The Smiths run in the country right now. Gentlemen, thanks so much for being here. Let's begin the debate and let's start with the issue that voters consistently say. Wow. Concern the economy. President Biden, inflation has slowed, but prices remain high. Since you took office, the price of essentials has increased. For example, a basket of groceries that cost $100 then now costs more than $120. And typical home prices have jumped more than 30%. What do you say to voters who feel they are worse off under your presidency than they were under President Trump? We got to take a look at what I was left when the became president. <laughs> Mr. Trump left me. We had an economy that was in free fall. Pandemic was so badly handled. Many people were dying. All he said was, it's not that serious. Just inject a little bleach in your arm. You'll be all right. The economy collapsed. There were no jobs. Unemployment rate rose to 15%. It was terrible. And so what we had to do was try to put things back together again. And that's exactly what we began to do. We created 15,000 new jobs. <laughs> we brought out in a position where 
We have 800,000 new manufacturing jobs. Why are you only bringing up the shit that happened during COVID, though? What about... He was president for four years. You were born there. You didn't stay there, dude. The price of banks, the price of gas, the price of housing, the price of a whole range of things. That's why I'm working so hard to make sure I deal with those problems. And we're going to make sure that we reduce the price of housing. We're going to make sure we have two, two million new units. We're going to make sure we cap rents so corporate greed can't take over. The combination of what is left of the corporate greed is the reason why I'm in this problem right now. In addition to that, we're in a situation where if you had to take a look at all that was done in his administration, he didn't do much at all. By the time he left, there was things were in chaos, literally chaos. And so we put things back together. We created, I said, those jobs. We make sure we have a situation where we now we brought down the price of prescription drugs, which is a major issue for many people, to $15 for, for uh, an insulin shot. It was already uh, down uh, before you said. be more than $200 for any drug, all the drugs they can move to getting next year. All right, year. I'm going to try to remain. And we're going to make that available to everybody, to all Americans. So we're working to bring down the price of around the kitchen table, and that's what we're going to get down. Thank you. President Trump? We have the greatest economy in the history of our country, and we have never done so well. Every, everybody is amazed by it. Other countries were copying us. We got hit with COVID, and when we did, we spent the money necessary so we wouldn't end up in the Great Depression, the likes of which we had in 1929. By the time we finished, so we did a great job. We got a lot of credit for the economy, a lot of credit for the military, and no wars, and so many other things. Everything was rocking good. But the thing we never got the credit for, and we should have, is getting us out of that COVID mess. Uh, he created mandates that was a disaster for our country. But other than that, we had we had given them back a a country where the stock market actually was higher than pre-COVID, and nobody thought that was even possible. Uh, the only jobs he created are for illegal immigrants and bounce back jobs, a bounce back from the COVID. He mm -hmm. has not done a good job. He's done a poor job and inflation is killing our country. It is absolutely killing us. Aren't Thank some you. of those jobs too that they're counting? And you know, the fact of the matter is that uh, we find ourselves in a situation where his, his economy he rewarded the wealthy. He had the largest tax cut in American history, $2 trillion. Yeah, yeah I benefited from that tax cut. I, I remember. He's the only president other than Herbert Hoover who had lost more jobs than he had when he began, since Herbert Hoover. The idea that he did something that was significant in the military. You know, when he was president, we were still killing people in Afghanistan. He didn't do anything about that. When he was president, we were still finding ourselves in a position where you had the notion that we were a safe country. The truth is, I'm the only president this century that doesn't have any, this, this decade, that doesn't have any troops dying anywhere in the world like he did. Uh, president Trump, uh, I want to follow up if I can. You Am I allowed to respond to him? Well, I'm going to ask you a follow-up. You can do whatever you want with the minute that we give you. Um, I, I want to follow up. You, you want to impose a 10% tariff on all goods coming into the U.S. How will you ensure that that doesn't drive prices even higher? It's not going to drive them higher. It's just going to cause countries that have been ripping us off for years, like China and many others, in all fairness to China. It's going to just force them to pay us a lot of money, reduce our deficit tremendously, and give us a lot of power for other things. But he, would, he made a statement. The only thing he was right about is I gave you the largest tax cut in history. I also gave you the largest regulation cut in history. That's why we had all the jobs. And the jobs went down, and then they bounced back. And he's taking credit for bounce-back jobs. You can't do that. He also said he inherited 9% inflation. No, he inherited almost no inflation, and it stayed that way for 14 months. And then it blew up under his leadership because they spent money like a bunch of people that didn't know what they were doing. And they don't know what they were doing. It was the worst, probably the worst administration in history. There's never been. And as far as Afghanistan is concerned, I was getting out of Afghanistan. But we were getting out with dignity, with strength, with power. He got out. It was the most embarrassing day in the history of our country's life. President Trump, over the last eight years, under both of your administrations... He literally has a look on his face going, What is he talking about? What is he mentioning? When do we pull out of Afghanistan? ...$8.4 trillion in new debt. Well, so far, President Biden, you've approved $4.3 trillion in new debt. 
So, former President Trump, many of the tax cuts that you signed into law are set to expire next year. You want to extend them and go even further, you say. With the U.S. Please. trillion dollar deficits and record debt, why should top earners and corporations pay even less in taxes than they do now? Because the tax cut spurred the greatest economy that we've ever seen just prior to COVID. And even after COVID, it was so strong that we were able to get through COVID much better than just about any other country. But we spurred that tax spurred. Now, when we cut the taxes, as an example, the uh, corporate tax was cut down to 21 percent from 39 percent plus beyond that. Uh, we took in more revenue with much less tax and companies were bringing back trillions of dollars back into our country. The country was going like never before and we were ready to start paying down debt. We were ready to start using the liquid gold right under our feet, the oil and gas right under our feet. We were going to have something that nobody else has had. We got hit with COVID. We did a lot to fix it. I gave him an unbelievable situation with all of the therapeutics and all of the things that we came up with. We, we gave him something great. Remember, more people died under his administration, even though we had largely fixed it. More people died under his administration than our administration, and we were right in the middle of it, something which a lot of people don't like to talk about. But he had far more people dying in his administration. He did the mandate, which is a disaster, mandating it. The vaccine went out. He did a mandate on the vaccine, which is the thing that people most objected to about the vaccine. And he did a very poor job, just a very poor job. And I will tell you, not only poor there, but throughout the entire world, we're no longer respected as a country. They don't respect our leadership. They don't respect the United States anymore. We're like a third world nation between weaponization of his election, trying to go after his political opponent, all of the things he's done. We've become like a third world nation. And it's a shame. The damage he's done to our country, and I'd love to ask him and Will why he allowed millions of people to come in here from prisons, jails, and mental institutions to come into our country and destroy our country. President Trump, we will get to immigration uh, later in this block. President Biden, uh, I want to give you an opportunity to respond to this question about the national debt. He had the largest national debt of any president in a four-year period, number one. Number two, he got two trillion dollar tax cuts and benefited the very wealthy. No, I benefited from it a lot. I remember that. My paychecks went up a lot at that point. And I was commissioned at that time. I got taxed the fuck out of that crap. If they just paid 24%, 25%, either one of those numbers, we may raise $500 million, billion dollars, I should say, in a 10-year period. We'd be able to right wipe out his debt. We'd be able to help make sure that all those things we need to do, child care, elder care, making sure that we continue to strengthen our health care system, making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person uh, eligible for what I've been able to do. Here's the thing about taxes. It only goes to the government. That's it. Governments don't build businesses. People do. We finally beat Medicare. Thank you, President uh, Biden. President Trump? Well, he's right. He did beat Medicare. He beat it to death, and he's destroying Medicare because all of these people are coming in. They're putting them on Medicare. They're putting them on Social Security. They're going to destroy Social Security. This man is going to single-handedly destroy Social Security. These millions and millions of people coming in, they're trying to put them on Social Security. He will wipe out Social Security. He will wipe out Medicare. So he was right in the way he finished that sentence. And it's a shame. What's happened to our country in the last four years is not to be believed. Foreign countries, I'm friends with a lot of people, they cannot believe what happened to the United States of America. We're no longer respected. They, they don't like us. We give them everything they want, and they, they think we're stupid. They think we're very stupid people. What we're doing in other countries, and they do nothing for us. What this man has done is absolutely Fighting. criminal. You there? Thank you, President Trump. Jana? This is the first presidential election since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. This morning, the court ruled on yet another abortion case, temporarily allowing emergency abortions to continue in Idaho despite that state's restrictive ban. Former President Trump, you take credit for the decision to overturn Roe v. Wade, which returned the issue of abortion to the states. Correct. However, the federal government still plays a role in whether or not women have access to abortion pills. 
They're used in about two thirds of all abortions. As president, would you block abortion medication? First of all, the Supreme Court just approved the abortion pill, and I agree with their decision to have done that, and I will not block it. And Good. Okay. If you look at this whole question that you're asking, a complex but not really complex. Fifty-one years ago, you had Roe v. Wade, and everybody wanted to get it back to the states. Everybody, without exception. Democrats, Republicans, liberals, conservatives. That's actually true, by the way. Legislators. And what I did is I put three great Supreme Court justices on the court, and they happened to vote in favor of killing Roe v. Wade and moving it back to the states. This is something that everybody wanted. Not everybody wanted. Or so they started talking about how many weeks and how many this and getting into other things. But every legal scholar throughout the world, the most respected, wanted it brought back to the states. I did that. Now the states are working it out. If you look at Ohio, it was a decision that was it was an end result. It was a little bit more liberal than you would have thought. Kansas, I would say the same thing. Texas is different. Florida is different. But they're all making their own decisions. Biden. And right now, the states control it. That's the vote of the people. Like Ronald Reagan, I believe in the exceptions. I am a person that believes. And frankly, I think it's important to believe in the exceptions. Some people, you have to follow your heart. Some people don't believe in that. But I believe in the exceptions for rape, incest, and the life of the mother. I think it's very important. Some people don't. Follow your heart. But you have to get elected also. And because that has to do with other things. You've got to get elected. The problem they have is they're radical because they will take the life of a child in the eighth month, the ninth month, and even after birth. After birth. If you look at the former governor of Virginia, he was willing to do this. He said, we'll put the baby aside and we'll determine what we do with the baby, meaning we'll kill the baby. What happened is we brought it back to the states and the country is now coming together on this issue. It's been a great thing. Thank you. President Biden. It's been a terrible thing, what you've done. The fact is that the vast majority of constitutional scholars supported Roe when it was decided. Supported Roe. And that was this idea that they were all against it. You were against it, dude! That's the guy who said the state should be able to have it. We're in a state where in six weeks... No, seriously. Joe Biden was originally against Roe v. Wade. See a doctor, Henry, and have him decide on what your circumstances are when you need help. The idea that states are able to do this is a little like saying we're going to turn civil rights back to the states. Let each state have a different rule. Look, there's so many women who have been, including a young woman who just was murdered, and he went to the funeral. The idea that she was murdered by an immigrant coming in. You talk about that. Here's the deal. There's a lot of young women who are being raped by their in-laws, by their spouses, brothers and sisters. It's just ridiculous. And they can do nothing about it. And they try to arrest them when they cross state lines. Thank you. There have been many young women murdered by the same people he allows to come across our border. We have a border that's the most dangerous place anywhere in the world. Consider the most dangerous place anywhere in the world. And he opened it up, and these killers are coming into our country. And they are raping and killing women. And it's a terrible thing. As far as the abortion is concerned, it is now back with the states. The states are voting. And in many cases, it's frankly a very liberal decision. In many cases, it's the opposite. But they're voting, and it's bringing it back to the vote of the people, which is what everybody wanted, including the founders, if they knew about this issue, which, frankly, they didn't. But everybody wanted it brought back. Ronald Reagan wanted it brought back. He wasn't able to get it. Everybody wanted it brought back. And many presidents had tried to get it back. I was the one to do it. And, again, this gives it the vote of the people, and that's where they wanted it. Every legal scholar wanted it that way. Staying on the topic of abortion, President Biden, seven states. No, seriously, look it up. Joe Biden originally voted to overturn Roe v. Wade. On how far into a pregnancy a woman can obtain an abortion. Do you support any legal limits on how late a woman should be able to terminate a pregnancy? I support Roe v. Wade. It's had three trimesters. First time is between the woman and the doctor. Second time is between the doctor and an extreme situation. The third time is between the doctor, I mean, between the woman and the state. The idea that the politicians, that the founders wanted the politicians. You just said it. Between the woman and the state. It's in the state health. 
And so last, no politician should make that decision. A doctor should be making those decisions. That's how it should be run. That's what you're going to do. And if I'm elected, I'm going to restore Roe v. Wade. So that means he can take the life of the baby in the ninth month and even after birth, because some states, Democrat run, take it after birth. Again, the governor, former governor of Virginia, put the baby down, then we decide what to do with it. So he's, in, he's willing to, as we say, rip the baby out of the womb in the ninth month and kill the baby. Nobody wants that to happen, Democrat or Republican. Nobody wants it to happen. That is simply not true. The Roe v. Wade does not provide for that. That's not the circumstance. Only a woman's life is in danger. She's going to die. That's the only circumstance in which that can happen. But we are not for late-term abortion, period. Period, period. The Roe v. Wade, you have late-term abortion. You can do whatever you want, depending on the state. You can do whatever you want. We don't think that's a good thing. We think it's a radical thing. We think the Democrats are the radicals, not the Republicans. For 51 years, that was the law. 51 years, constitutional scholarship said it was the right way to go. 51 years, and it was taken away because this guy, who could very conservative members on the Supreme Court, takes credit for taking it away. What's he going to do? What's he going to do, in fact, if the, if the MAGA Republicans, he gets elected, and the MAGA Republicans control the Congress, and they pass a universal ban on abortion, period, across the board, at six weeks or seven or eight or ten weeks, something very, very conservative. Is he going to sign that bill? I'll veto it. He'll sign it. Thank you. Let's turn now to the issue of immigration and border security. President Biden, a record... Whoa, 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 whoa. Can't he have an ex... The southern border on your watch. He can't have a rebuttal on that? ...states and overburdening cities such as New York and Chicago, and in some cases causing real safety and security concerns. Given that, why should voters trust you to solve this crisis? Because we worked very hard to get a bipartisan agreement that not only changed all of that, but it made sure that we are in a situation where you had no circumstance where they could come across the border with the number of border police there are now. We significantly increased the number of asylum officers. Significantly, by the way, the Border Patrol endorsed me, endorsed my position. In addition to that, we found ourselves in a situation where when he was president, he was taking, separating babies from their mothers, putting them in cages, making sure they were in the, in the family. Cages for assault that was started by Obama. What I've done since I've changed the law, what's happened? I've changed it in a way that now... You're in a situation not to mention, it's not Trump's fault that those... People coming across the border. It's not the Trump's fault. They were born here in America. And I'm going to continue to move until we get the total ban on the, 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 the total initiative relative to what we're going to do with more border patrol and more uh, asylum officers. President Trump? Uh, I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. Look, we had the safest border in the history of our country. <laughs> All he had to do was leave it. He decided to open up our border, open up our country to people that are from prisons, people that are from mental institutions, insane asylum, terrorists. We have the largest number of terrorists coming into our country right now, all terrorists, all over the world, not just in South America, all over the world. They come from the Middle East, everywhere. All over the world, they're pouring in. And this guy just left it open. And he didn't need legislation because I didn't have legislation. I said, close the border. We had the safest border in history. In that final couple of months of my presidency, we had, according to Border Patrol, who is great, and by the way, who endorsed me for president, but I won't say that, but they endorsed me for president. Brandon, just speak to him. But <laughs> the safest border in history. Now we have the worst border in history. There's never been anything like it. And people are dying all over the place, including the people that are coming up in Thank you, President Trump. Uh, President Biden? The only terrorist who's done anything across the border is one who came along and killed three, and his administration killed an Al Qaeda person, and his administration killed three American soldiers. Killed three American soldiers. That's the only terrorist that's there. I'm not saying that no terrorist ever got through, but the idea they're emptying their prisons, we're, left, we're welcoming these people. That's simply not true. There's no data to support what he said. Once again, he's because they're president undocumented! President Trump, um, staying on the topic of immigration, you've said that you're going to carry How can you support that? How can you prove that when there's no documents on them? Does that mean that you will deport every undocumented immigrant in America, including those who have jobs, including those whose spouses are citizens, and including those who have lived here for decades? And if so, how will you do it? Uh, just one second. He said we killed three people. The people we killed are 
El Baghdadi and Salamani, the two greatest terrorists, biggest terrorists anywhere in the world. And it had a huge impact on everything, not just border, on everything. He's the one that killed people with the bad water, including hundreds of thousands of people dying and also killing our citizens when they come in. We, ha we are living right now in a rat's nest. They're killing our people in, oh. in California. And he didn't Canada. answer that question, though. Because we don't have borders anymore. Every state is now a border. And because of his ridiculous, insane, and very stupid policies, people are coming in and they're killing our citizens at a level that we've never seen. We call it migrant crime. I call it Biden migrant crime. They're killing our citizens at a level that we've never seen before. And you're reading it like these three incredible young girls over the last few days. One of them, I just spoke to the mother. And he just had the funeral for this girl, 12 years old. This is horrible what's taken place. What's taken place in our country, we're literally an uncivilized country now. He doesn't want it to be. He just doesn't know. He opened the borders. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. And we have to get a lot of these people out, and we have to get them out fast because they're going to destroy our country. Just take a look at where they're living. They're living in. Latin I live in Ohio, Ohio, so I'm not really uh, City and other places are known about this, at least as far as I know. He doesn't, care. he doesn't like the military at all, and he doesn't care about our veterans. Nobody's been worse. I had the highest approval rating for veterans taking care of the VA. He has been worse. He's gotten rid of all the things that I approved. Choice that I got through Congress. Uh, all of the different things I approved, they abandoned. We had by far the highest, and now it's down in less than half because he's done all these great things that we did, and I think he did it just because I approved it, which is crazy. But he has killed... Honestly, so yeah! Our border by Thank allowing you, all of these people to come in. And it's like, if I recall correctly, basically... What Biden... The first thing Biden did was reverse just about every single thing. One million of them now insurance and their families have it. Their families have it because what happened, whether it was Asian Orange or Burn Pits, they're all being covered now. And he opposed his group opposed that. We're also in a situation where we have great respect for veterans. My son, my son spent a year in Iraq, living one next to one of those burn pits, came back with stage four glioblastoma. I was there he goes with his son again. France for D Day. And I spoke to all about those heroes that died. I went to the World War II cemetery, World War I cemetery, he refused to go to. He was standing with his four-star general, and he told me, he said, I don't want to go in there because they're a bunch of losers and suckers. My son was not a loser, he was not a sucker. You're the sucker. You're the loser. President Trump? Uh, first of all, that was a made-up quote, suckers and losers. They made it up. It was in a third-rate magazine that's failing, like many of these magazines. Uh, he made that up. He put it in commercials. We have notified him. We had 19 people that said I didn't say it. And think of this. Who would say I'm at a cemetery or I'm talking about our veterans? Because nobody's taking better care. I'm so glad this came up and he brought it up. There's nobody that's taken better care of our soldiers than I have. To think that I would, in front of generals and others, say suckers and losers. We have 19 people that said it was never said by me. It was made up by him, just like Russia, Russia, Russia was made up, just like the 51 intelligence agents are made up, just like the new thing with the 16 economists are talking, it's the same thing. 51 intelligence agents said that the laptop was Russia disinformation. It wasn't. That came from his son, Hunter. It wasn't Russia disinformation. He made up the suckers and losers, so he should apologize to me right now. Four-star general standing to your side who was on your staff who said you said it, period. That's number one. And number two, the idea, the idea that I have to apologize to you for anything along the line. We've done more for veterans than any president has in American history. American history. And they now are in their family. The only sacred obligation we have as a country is to care for our veterans when they come home and, <coughs> and when they go to war. Dude, you weren't even there. For the Gold Star family. Ever before in history. All right, thank you so much. Top of the foreign policy. I want to begin with Russia's war against Ukraine, which is now in its third year. Former President Trump, Russian President Vladimir Putin, says he'll only end this war if Russia keeps the Ukrainian territory it has already claimed and Ukraine abandons its bid to join NATO. Are Putin's terms acceptable to you? First of all, our veterans, 
and our soldiers can't stand this guy. They can't stand him. They think he's the worst commander-in-chief, if that's what you call him, that we've ever had. They can't stand him. So let's get that straight. And they like me more than just about any of them. And that's based on every single bit of information. As far as Russia and Ukraine, if we had a real president, the president that knew, that was respected by Putin, he would have never, he would have never invaded Ukraine. A lot of people are dead right now, much more than people know. You know, they talk about numbers. You can double those numbers, maybe triple those numbers. He did nothing to stop it. In fact, I think he encouraged Russia from going in. I'll tell you what happened. He was so bad with Afghanistan. It was such a horrible, embarrassment, most embarrassing moment in the history of our country. That when Putin yeah, there's a few others, but dear God. Said he, should, he should have fired those generals like I fired the one that you mentioned. And so he's got no love loss. But he should have fired those generals. No general got fired for the most embarrassing moment in the history of our country, Afghanistan. When what exactly happened at Abbey Gate? We lost 13 beautiful soldiers and 38 soldiers were obliterated. And by the way, we left people behind too. We left American citizens behind. When Putin saw that, he said, you know what? I think we're going to go in and maybe take my... This was his dream. I talked to him about it, his dream. The difference is he never would have invaded Ukraine. Never. Just like Israel would have never been invaded in a million years by Hamas. You know why? Because Iran was broke with me. I wouldn't let anybody do business with them. They ran out of money. They were broke. They had no money for Hamas. They had no money for anything. No money for terror. That's why you had no terror at all during my administration. This place, the whole world is blowing up under him. President Biden. I've never heard so much malarkey in my whole life. Look, the fact of the matter is that we're in a situation where, let's take the last point first. Iran attacked American troops, killed, uh, caused brain damage for a number of these troops, and he did nothing about it. Recently, not when he was president. There they attacked. He said they're just having headaches. That's all it is. And he didn't do a thing when the attack took place, number one. Number two, we got over 100,000 Americans and others out of, of uh, Afghanistan during that area. Number three, we found ourselves in a situation where if you take a look at what Trump did in Ukraine, he's, this guy told Ukraine, he told Trump, do whatever you want, and do whatever you want. And that's exactly what Trump did to Putin, encourage him, do whatever you want. And he went in. And listen to what he said when he went in. We're going to take Kiev in five days, remember? Because it's part of the old Soviet Union. That's what he wanted to reestablish. Oh, Kiev. sorry. And he, in fact, didn't do it at all. He didn't, wasn't able to get it done. And they've oh, lost over sorry, Hunter. They've lost thousands and thousands of troops. 500,000 troops. President Trump, I, I never come said back to that. You for, for one minute, I just want to go back to my original question, which is Are Putin's terms acceptable to you? Keeping the territory no, they're not in Ukraine. Acceptable. No, they're not acceptable. But look, this is a war that never should have started. If we had a leader in this war, he led mm -hmm. everybody along. He's given $200 billion now or more to Ukraine. He's given $200 billion. That's a lot of money. I don't think there's ever been anything like it. Every time that Zelensky comes to this country, he walks away with $60 billion. He's the greatest salesman ever. And I'm not knocking him. I'm not knocking anything. I'm only saying the money that we're spending on this war, and we shouldn't be spending. It should have never happened. I will have that war settled between Putin and Zelensky as president-elect before I take office on January 20th. I'll have that war settled. People being killed so needlessly, so stupidly, and I will get it settled, and I'll get it settled fast before I take office. You know, you have a minute. the fact is that Putin is a war criminal. He's killed thousands and thousands of people. And he has made one thing clear. He wants to reestablish what was part of the Soviet Empire. Not just a piece who wants all of Ukraine. That's what he wants. And then you think he'll stop there? You think he'll stop when he, if he, if he takes Ukraine? What do you think happens to Poland? What do you think of Belarus? What do you think happens to those NATO countries? And so if you want a war, you ought to find out what he's going to do. Because if, in fact, he does what he says and walks away, by the way, all that money we give Ukraine, the weapons we make here in the United States, we give them the weapons, not the money at this point. And, then, and our NATO allies have produced as much funding for Ukraine as we have. That's why, it's, that's why we're strong. Thank you. Moving on to the Middle East. 
In October, Hamas attacked Israel, killing more than a thousand people. In Remember the Abraham Accords? Among those held, and it was like seeming like peace in the Middle East was coming closer than ever. Now it seems worse than ever. Just saying. Just stating facts. President Biden, you've put forward a, a proposal to resolve this conflict, but so far Hamas has not released the remaining hostages, and Israel is continuing its military offensive in Gaza. So, what additional leverage? Six of those people were just found Hamas dead, too. Israel to end the war. You have two minutes. Number one. Everyone from the United Nations Security Council. All right, time for a stop. Give me one second here. The Israelis and Netanyahu himself have endorsed the 